For more on the Biden and Trump campaign's final strategies, I'm joined now by Linda Tran and Lan Hee Chen. Linda is a CBS News political contributor. Lan Hee was the poli policy director for Mitt Romney's 2012 presidential campaign, as well as an advisor for Marco Rubio's 2016 campaign. Great to have both of you with us this final Saturday before Election Day. I know you're as excited as I am. Lan Hee, I'm going to start with you. President Trump is making four campaign stops in Pennsylvania. He narrowly won there in 2016, but our CBS News battleground track shows that Biden is currently leading the state by seven percentage points. So what do people in Pennsylvania need to hear from the president if he wants their vote in this final hour? Well, Pennsylvania is going to be critical. There's no question about it. If you look at this election, you look at the states that are in play, uh, Pennsylvania is really the key to President Trump's strategy to win re-election. Now, in terms of what they need to hear, uh, the reality is that the president needs to figure out a way to focus on the economic message and what he's going to be doing for the next four years. I think so long as the focus is on the virus, so long as the focus is on the recent economic downturn, the president's going to have a very, very difficult time. Uh, but presuming he can actually get ahead to that forward-looking message, that he can speak about what the next four years of a Trump administration would look like, that I think is what is going to be appealing potentially to voters who might still be undecided, voters who might traditionally, for example, support Republicans, but have issues with President Trump's style or what he's done personally. Making that argument about uh, these next four years, I think, is what it's going to take to get those voters home and ultimately for him to be successful in Pennsylvania. But Lonnie, I want to ask you about that, because it seems like President Trump has, in fact, tried to do that, trying to divorce talk of the pandemic from the economy. But uh, as we all know, our economy is is tied to this pandemic that we're in. Uh, has that been an effective strategy? Will that be an effective strategy for the president to continue to basically ignore the pandemic um, in his messaging and, and trying to just talk about the economy as his vision for voters? Well, I think the um, strategy has been executed in a pretty unfocused way to the extent that it's been executed at all. I think that you're right. There is a link clearly between the pandemic and the economy. That having been said, given the choice of issues that are out there, given the choice of things that the president can be talking about, uh, uh, the economy is probably the preferred thing. I mean, look, it's quite clear if you look at public opinion polling that the president's ratings on, on his handling of COVID have not been great. Uh, and so focusing on COVID, focusing on those issues, uh, I think, causes more issue, more problem for the Trump campaign, which is why I do think ultimately Too late the economy, point. look, that's the one issue on which voters tend to give the president the benefit of the doubt. So uh, I think to the extent he's able to, again, focus on the message, as I said, I think at times the president may be his own worst enemy. He doesn't focus on a message in the same way like we might see many candidates do it. At points in the past, he may consider that a strength. Now, during the closing days of the campaign, it's not. He's got to focus in on one message and really hammer that home. And that, I think, is his best bet for success. All right. Linda, let's uh, let's bring in your thoughts about Biden and Pennsylvania. He's going to be closing out his campaign there on Monday. He visited that state at least 12 times since June. What does this say about how crucial winning Pennsylvania is to Biden potentially winning the presidency? And how confident is the Biden campaign at this point about uh, the polls in that state? Well, look, Lana, Pennsylvania is important every single cycle. But as you were just discussing with Lonnie, last cycle in particular, it was really the linchpin or one of the few linchpins in making sure that Donald Trump made it into the White House. And we see that the Biden campaign has definitely invested a lot into trying to flip the state back to blue this cycle. We saw Barack Obama on the campaign trail there for a drive-in rally just a few days ago. And it makes a ton of sense that this is where the campaign is really focusing its fire firepower in the final days and getting those last voters out uh, to vote for the Biden-Harris ticket. You know, the, the state itself uh, has, we've often said in Democratic politics, you've got Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania and Arkansas in between. So it's really tough terrain generally for Democrats. And the razor-thin margins of less than 1% in 2016 make Democrats uh, in general and the Biden campaign in particular very, very focused on not taking anything 
taken for granted. The polls have, as you mentioned, Lana, started to look pretty good over the last uh, few weeks and months, but the volunteers are out in force, at least on the phones, and the campaign is really focusing a lot of energy on making sure to get volunteers calling either in-state or from out-of-state into that, that state in particular. All right, Linda, well, I, you heard what Lonnie had to say. Um, do you have, uh, do you think that, um, that the economic message for Biden uh, is, is really going to be stronger there in Pennsylvania, how he's tried to bring back his, his Pennsylvania roots, his, his I, I come from a working class background. Does that play with the voters there? And how much is the energy argument that the Trump campaign is making in their final days about fracking and, and the oil and coal industry. How much is that affecting the potential for Pennsylvania voters um, in this very final hour? Well, first, Lana, I do think that that message about being a, a son of Scranton really does resonate with voters in Pennsylvania. Uh, again, that, that chunk of, of the state that I was talking about earlier geographically is certainly receptive to the notion of somebody who comes from a working class background who knows what it is to struggle, especially in sharp contrast to billionaire Donald Trump. I think that that is uh, very persuasive and certainly um, is helping the case for the Biden-Harris campaign there. When it comes to energy, uh, we all know know that there have been some uh, quite a good deal of conversation on the campaign trail about the former vice president's position on fracking in particular, and it's very, very tied, of course, to jobs in that state. So I have no doubt that those kinds of questions come up for the vice president when he is on the campaign trail. But I think overall, the, the state of the country, the state of the world right now with this ongoing economic crisis, which of course is tied to coronavirus, is the thing that is most top of mind for all voters everywhere, including in Pennsylvania. Lonnie, I want to ask you, uh, moving away from Pennsylvania, a little bit more about uh, what's happening um, in the Midwest. In particular, I want to talk about Michigan. The state there, COVID-19 hospitalizations are up 96 percent since October 1st. Does he have to have a different strategy when talking to Michigan voters um, than he does in other places, given the spike in the pandemic right now? Well, I don't think the president has been uh, keen to calibrate his message, uh, if, if that's the question. If the idea is, look, because mm. we've seen more COVID uh, in Michigan, Wisconsin, another state where, where we're seeing tremendous spikes, uh, spikes currently, uh, I, I think the notion that he would calibrate his message, I think, is anathema to what the president does to the president's campaign. I think he's going to be saying the same thing regardless of where he goes. Look, the, the strategy now, Lana, it appears to me is really about a about base mobilization. It's about how do you get your supporters out? How do you get them enthusiastic? And, and his political base is responsive to his posture uh, on COVID, the way he talks about all of these issues. Uh, and, and the problem with that, of course, is that if you try to mobilize your base with that message, you risk turning off uh, potentially another group of voters who might vote for you. So under normal circumstances, I'd say absolutely. You want a candidate to think about the specific message they're going to have uh, in, in one state versus another. When I've counseled candidates over these many years, that's always been uh, our counsel to candidates has been, look, you know, you've got to figure out where you're campaigning and what you want to say that's targeted to the people in that state. Um, but that's just not how this president rolls, so to speak. That's not how he, he tends to operate. And, and so, um, you know, I would expect him fully to have the same message, whether he's in Michigan or Wisconsin or anywhere else, regardless of what's happening with these COVID cases. All right, last question for the both of you. More than 90 million people have already cast their ballot for president. That means, of course, that there is a very small percentage of voters who are even going to cast their ballots. And then from that small sliver, there's an even smaller group of voters that are undecided. Do you think that there is a strategy that could change this election in these final days? Or do you think the cake is baked? So, Linda, I'll start with you. Look, I, I, Lana, we all lived through 2016 together, so I'm always nervous and I have tons of anxiety in these final days heading into Election Day, um, so I hesitate to say that the cake is already baked. That said, you know, I think that Joe Biden started this campaign with a message that resonates with American voters, that this is about a battle for the soul for, of the nation, and he's closing it now with essentially the same message. It's a contrast, a uh, comparison between the character of the two men at the top of the ticket and ultimately 
the question remains for voters, who do they believe is most well equipped and most likely to lead us out of the coronavirus and economic crises that we find ourselves in today? Lonnie? Uh, I think the cake is mostly baked at this point, particularly given the number of people who voted early and an unprecedented number of voted early because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, so, you know, I think largely the dynamics of this race have been what they've been for the last several weeks. We can talk about all the episodic things that we've seen, times when the president may be bumping up, the times when, when Biden may be, may be coming up in the polls. But the reality is that uh, this race and the dynamics of this race have been set for, for many weeks. So uh, I tend to think that what happens these last few days uh, can affect things on the very edge of the margins. But for the most part, I think this election uh, has been decided by the millions upon millions of voters who've already cast their votes. All right. Well, we will be waiting to see how they cast their votes. Linda Tran, Lonnie Chan, thank you both.